Hello, it is Sunday, July 30th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday crossword today, so as you can see, even behind the gauzy privacy veil, we have an extra large grid, a jumbo grid. It uh, should only be about a midweek difficulty level with a theme, but um, it's a big long solve because it's a Sunday puzzle, and that's just what happens. And this long Sunday edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by William Arundel, Adam and Annette Noble, Emma Smith, and as always, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are sustaining this channel, bringing us this series. For that, I am incredibly appreciative, very grateful. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel in that same manner, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons as well as for benefactors, the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. And uh, thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. I really do appreciate it. Um, there's also the Daily Self Discord chat server. You can join that if interested. Um, it's a nice, friendly chat community, and there's a link in the description field. And please do subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That's a big help. Thanks to everybody who's done that as well. So let's not uh, take any more time. Let's get right on to today's puzzle. We'll need all the time we can get. It's a Sunday crossword, so it's it's titled, and this one is called Doing Front Flips. It was constructed by John Kugelman in his debut for the New York Times crossword. So uh, welcome to him on this Jumbo Sunday uh, edition. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. I'm curious about this doing front flips. Maybe we sort of have to flip letters around at the front of words, something like that. Um, but let's start solving and see. Organization that sells speaking up for those who can't t-shirts. I don't know off the top of my head. Fictional supplier of jet-propelled pogo sticks and dehydrated boulders. Uh, surely the Acme Corporation as depicted in Roadrunner cartoons and other cartoons. Uh, makeshift knife. A shiv could be a makeshift knife, often associated with prisons and things like that. Grading option. Could be some sort of scale. What about this here? Chargeable cars for short EVs for electric vehicles. There we go. Okay, so what is the organization that... Oh, maybe it's the ASPCA? The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals? That would make sense. If animals sort of don't have a political voice, this organization gives it to them. Uh, or aims to. Grading option... Um, directors shout. A director could shout cut at the end of a take on a film set. And loved, loved, loved with up. Ate up. I just loved, loved, loved it. I ate it up. Social movement that Teddy Roosevelt proclaimed the most American thing in America. Um, I do not know. Social movement. I'm trying to think what, what things would qualify as this, and I just do not know. And here, oh, right, this is italicized. So this is... Um, uh, going to be a theme clue of some sort. It'll it'll be doing front flips, maybe. Hugh Hefner was quite the media mogul. They called him Mr. Mr. Something. Hugh Hefner, the late owner of Playboy. What? I mean, I assume Mr. Something, based on the fill. Grading option. Oh, pass-fail. There we go. That's a way you can be graded in some courses. You could just get a pass-fail grade rather than a particular letter grade. Set as a security system. To set a security system could be to arm it. So what is this? This looks strange to me. I don't know why I can't see what it is. Social movement. These all seem... These crosses all seem correct. I don't know what I'm missing there. Here we have jerk face. A meanie, maybe? Kind of similarly sort of childish uh, construction. Die, e.g. Well, it could be a, a die as in one of several dice, so a cube. Shade of blue could be aqua, maybe, with that ending in that A. Bread or pasta, informally. There's a carb, carbohydrate. There we go. Uh, I don't know. This must be a proper noun that I just, that I just don't know. Social movement. Verb for a biblical cup. Cup runneth, my cup uh, runneth over, goes the quotation. So there we go. Cast out could be 
Banish? Yes, you could cast someone out, banish them. Chautauqua, Chautauqua. I mean, it's clearly named for some sort of indigenous tribe, but I, or, or, or something to that effect, but I, I just don't know what this organization is. I hope this is right. I mean, it's because it's a word I don't recognize, I'm entirely relying on the crosses, but I'm fairly confident about these crosses. None of them were seemed very esoteric or unusual. So I think I'll have to just assume that's correct. Anyway, Mr. Bunny Ears. I mean, there's the, they're the sort of Playboy bunny. Is it, doesn't Playboy have a sort of, is it Bunny Ears logo or is it something else? I can't actually picture it in my head. Mr. Bunny I don't know. Quite the media. What does that have to do with being quite the media mogul, though? I don't know. I'm not quite seeing what's going on with this theme clue here. Himalayan sight, or maybe not, a yeti. The abominable snowman being sighted, or maybe not actually sighted. Lauder in the cosmetics aisle. Estee Lauder, the famous cosmetician and, and uh, business person. Whole could be the entire thing, the whole thing. General with a spicy recipe. General Tso's who's chicken, who's famously included in uh, a number of um, kind of, I don't know, westernized Chinese restaurants. It may be based on a Chinese recipe. I don't actually know. In any case, with these, one can surely walk on water. I'm not sure. And nobody ever got fired for buying blank. Old business saying... For buying low, sort of in, in, in the sense of buying stocks or, or any commodity or anything at a low price, and so it could be sold high, I don't know. Ray of Vengeance, I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure this is right. Nobody ever got fired for buying nothing, buying nil, buying Ray of Vengeance, is it Issa Ray? I don't think I know Vengeance, let's try that and see. With these, one can surely walk on waters. Right. What are they? Uh, ski something? Um, learned or learned. It could be an adjective or an ad uh, or uh, it could be an adjective or a verb. Sage. A learned person. A sage person. Blank Hungarian Empire. The Austro-Hungarian Empire. Whoops. Austro-Hungarian Empire. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Boyfriend could be one's beau. Um, boyfriend beau. Uh, gives off, emits maybe, as in emits an odor, gives off an odor, odor. Christopher Nolan, director of Oppenheimer, which I did see and very much enjoyed. Uh, what might prompt nostalgia? Pasture sound, moo. Uh-huh, sure. I'll bite is the first thing that comes to mind, but it doesn't fit clearly. Leaf wrapped Mexican dish is a tamale. Catches could be snags, maybe. You snag something, you catch it. Is there another possibility there? Not coming to mind. Uh, leaf wrapped Turkish dick, do, uh, dish, dol, dolma. Um, grape leaves, grape leaves wrapped around what, rice, I guess. I haven't, I haven't had a dolma in a while either. Uh, uh huh, sure. I'll say. I really want this to be all bite, but it's obviously not the answer. Catch? Oh, bag. Oh, that's funny. So we have catch, catches, and then catch. So you catch someone or something, you bag it or them. Uh-huh, sure. I'll, I'll, still not all bite, even though it looks like it. Grabs a snack, say. Refills? I don't think that's right. Hands off. Let go. These one can surely walk on water. Oh, sea legs. Ah, right. Okay. So it means not walk literally on the water, but if you're sort of on water in the sense of being at sea on a boat, your sea legs will allow you to walk surely. They'll, they'll allow you to walk with confidence on, on the deck of the ship. Okay. Mr. B Mr. It's Spoonerisms. Mr. Bunny Mags. Right, okay, so I didn't need to remember what the Playboy logo looks like. I just needed to remember that it was in some way associated with Playboy magazine. So Mr. Bunny Mags is a spoonerism of Mr. Moneybags, the phrase. So spoonerism, named for the Reverend Spooner, who was an Oxford, Oxford Don, I guess, in the, um, I suppose he, he was basically a Victorian, although he lived, lived 
well into the 20th century. Um, he was sort of renowned for misspeaking in these uh, amusing ways. So there's this sort of thing where you, well, actually exactly as it says, you flip the front letters or, or not necessarily letters, but possibly syllables of words in a phrase and you make a kind of funny unintended result. Uh, apparently he was <laughs> somewhat resentful of this reputation. Apparently a very sort of pleasant person generally, but did not like that he had gained a reputation for this kind of uh, speech. And most likely most of the spoonerisms attributed to him are apocryphal. In any case, that's what we're doing in this puzzle. We are creating spoonerisms out of common phrases and turning them into funny thematic puns. So Mr. Moneybags becomes Mr. Bunny Mags. These are probably going to be difficult to spot without, they're sort of, it's exactly the kind of theme clue that makes perfect sense once you see it, but it's hard to jump straight to it because you don't know what phrase you're starting from. And they're, they're, the spelling generally changes as well. It's usually not that you just switch the letter around. You generally have to, to re-spell the word in order for it to be, to, to be valid. All right. Anyway, grabs a snack. Not sure about that. Start to see red. Go or get angry, maybe? I don't know. That's too many possibilities there. What might prompt nostalgia? End of an era. There we go. That's it. This does look like refills, doesn't it? That's surprising. But I don't think it is. It doesn't look right here. Country with no official language. The USA does not have an official language. It sort of has a de facto official language, but not legally. Uh, grabs a, oh, refuels. There we go. That's much better. Oops. Refuels, not refills. All right. So, I, oh, uh, sure, I'll bet. That's what it is. Not I'll bite, which also would have worked, I guess, but, but I'll bet, a sort of sarcastic uh, kind of thing. To start to see red is to, yeah, it does look like get, doesn't it? And then here we have, oh, well, that's a long one. I know they've had them on all day, but let the kids eat their candy. After all, a ring pop is a wearable thing to taste. Yes, it is. Very good. So this is playing on the phrase, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And, um, and we're flipping it around. So a ring pop, a sort of little candy that you wear on your finger, is a wearable thing to taste. Very clever, very good. All right, well, I was able to get that one at least without needing to cross the whole thing. So that's a bit of a relief given how long it is. Um, but let's see if that gives me anything else. Start to see red, get something. Diarmas, who name-checked the New York Times crossword on SNL, must be Anna Diarmas, the, the actor. So maybe this is get angry after all. Bit of Old Norse, a rune, whoops, could be used in an Old Norse writing system. And then if you're of two minds, you're torn. You can't decide which way you feel. Fleece-lined boots could be Uggs, the, the brand, which I think was a generic term that was then copyrighted or trademarked, I should say more accurately. Do you really trust these big Bitcoiners? Beware. Ooh, not sure about this one. This is probably an I. None of it, people. The Inuit. Indigenous people in the sort of I think Alaska, Northern Canada, those sorts of places. Do you really trust these Bitcoiners? Beware. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. One of a record 2,297 for Hank Aaron. Is it RBI? Or does that runs batted in? I know I've gone through this before. I know someone's explained it to me before at least once. Um, probably at least twice, but I can't. I think it's. I think it's that. Anyway, it's probably RBI. Kind of cat with short curly fur, and comic book sound effect. Bam, maybe, to represent a punch or something. Dreaded collectors. Dreaded collectors. Oh, tax men, because you dread that. Right. My first thought was dreaded, as in dreadlocked, like Rastas, maybe, but. I didn't know what collectors had to do with anything. So no, it was not that. It was just collectors who you might dread, the tax men. So what is the cat with short curly fur? Rex? I don't know. Rax? Rocks? I, I just, it do, doesn't sound familiar to me, unfortunately. Faith that pre preaches religious unity. Baha'i? Baha'i faith? And a jumbled mess could be a... 
Not sure. What about this one? Expels. Ends with an S, surely. Evicts. Yes, you could evict somebody, expel them. So jumbled mesh is a... Still, not, it's not coming to mind. Wait in the shadows. You could lurk. Restrain as breath. Bait your breath. You could wait with baited breath. So does that help me with this Bitcoin thing? Oh, this looks like I've done something wrong, doesn't it? This doesn't look good at all. This evict seems incorrect. Do you really trust these Bitcoiners? Beware. They they come bearing they come bearing grifts. They come bearing grifts. I'm trying to figure out how this, I mean, clearly this is based on the phrase, they come bearing, or we come bearing gifts. We come bearing gifts. Re. How am I not, <laughs> how am I not figuring this out? I have basically the whole thing. Bearing grifts. So the GR must come from somewhere else. I, I'm, I'm incredibly irritated at myself, but I can't quite finish this off. I'm pretty sure the bearing grifts part is correct because you're, you're, it's part of the clues. You're saying not to trust them because they're grifters. So academic with funding, say, a grantee, someone who's been, been given an academic grant, Himalayan river, the Indus river, cherish. Um, there's an amazing clue in the, uh, in the uh, listener crossword maybe last week's that it was, I think it was one of the last clues I filled in, in the, in the grid. And it had, it had, I don't remember what the clue was, but it had something to do with, you had to realize that the clue was referencing the Indus river. And then you had to move the eye down it to create nidus, which was a sort of breeding ground. And that was, that was the answer. And it was done in a very sort of cryptic way. And I was, I, Probably wasn't actually the most difficult clue in the puzzle, but it was, the, it was for some reason it was one that took me ages to spot. Okay. Anyway, habitually is often. Uh, Columbus School, um, Columbus, Ohio. So Ohio State University, maybe. Employers could be users if you employ someone or something you use them, and rare treat maybe could be a, a steak. Yes, you could cook a steak rare as a treat for yourself maybe. And a cherished family member or friend could be a dear family member or friend. Publicly makes fun of, slangily with on. You could dunk on someone publicly on sort of social media or something. If something's the least sweet, maybe it's the dullest. Doesn't fit. Um, but let's let's go back up to this area where I have more going on. Upsy Daisy, you could say if you made a mistake. Big name in chicken Popeye. There's a chain, a chicken chain called Popeye's Chicken. I think they're actually international. Um, so I think that's probably the answer. Family nickname. Is Baha'i wrong? Maybe it is. Family nickname. Daddy-o? It's not really a family nickname. It's more of a way to refer to a, a hip peer in mid-century slang. Counterpart of 84 across. Counterpart Counterpart is, uh, yeah, they just refer to each other. U.S. Intelligence Organization, the National Security Agency or Council, probably agency would be the organization. Um, family nickname. I just don't see what that is. What else do we have here? Jumbled mess. Right. Um, I don't know. Expels. Oh, right. I never looked at this. Mahaha is one, an evil laugh. Okay. I should have looked at this one once I, um, once I got rid of a fix. So expels is ingests, right? So the opposite of ingests. You expel something, you ingest it. And then here we have raison d'être, which is reason to be in French um, and used in English as well. Kind of whale with two blowholes, a baleen uh, whale. 
And then a key item could be a fob. You could keep your keys on a key fob in your pocket or a purse or what have you. And the night before could be the eve. Slithering swimmer could be an eel. Bitty tiny could be we. So... Oh, wait, I just realized. Do you really trust these Bitcoiners? Beware. We're not, it's not going to, it's not from like, it's not going to say beware they come bearing gifts. It's going to say beware those who do bear gifts or grifts. So beware. Uh, geeks? Yes. Oh, it is. It is. I didn't think of the original usage of the phrase, which is beware Greeks bearing gifts and referencing the Trojan War. Oh my goodness, it's a Geeks bearing gifts. That's incredibly clever. And I I missed the I, I kind of missed two elements of exactly how the clue is being phrased. Uh, well, I missed one element of exactly how the clue is being phrased. I just wasn't paying enough close enough attention to it. And then the other thing I missed was the original context of the phrase. Um uh, it's not just generically those bearing gifts, but rather uh, Greeks bearing gifts. The prophecy, in, in the prophecy. Okay, so there we go. Geeks bearing, geeks bearing, not not gearing, bearing grifts would be the scamming Bitcoiners. All right, there we go. Finally, sorry that took so long. Ridiculous. Um, all right. So what else do we have? Well, if you were accepted, you got in. So was accepted, got in. Suppressed as a story, you could sit on a story, or in the past tense, sat on it. Formation involving fibrin. I do not know. Curmudgeon's countenance. A scowl, maybe? You can be a scowling, curmudgeonly person. Jumbled mess, I still don't know. Best, optimal, optimal, yeah. The best, the optimal. I guess it could be, the thing is, best could be an adjective or a noun, so it could be optimal or optimum. Family nickname, I'm still confused by this one. Yeah, I don't know why I don't see it. The poor, oh, here's another one of these. The poor lion has a mighty toothache. Boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what we're looking for there. Boyo could be a lad, maybe. And then Alpha Centauri is a star. Hauled is, to, you hauled something around, you toted it around. Uh, the poor lion has a mighty toothache. Boy, when. Yeah, I, still, I still don't know what we're looking for. Okay, enjoy as an article, even though it makes your blood boil. You could maybe hate read it, I suppose. That that disambiguates optimal and optimum looks like optimal to me. Mont Blanc, par example, uh, par exemple, so that would be um, an Alp. And because the whole clue is written in French, um, it sort of looks like at a glance Mont Blanc, par example, you know, for example. But but it you know it's it's clearly actually written in French, and so we're going to spell the answer. In French, and that's that's a common convention in the crossword. When the clue is written in a given answer, you'll have to spell. Uh, sorry, when the clue is given, written in a given language, you'll have to write the answer in that language as well. Uh, so this here, we just have Alp the French spelling, which with an e on the end. Jumbled mess. Oh, a ha you've made a hash of it. A jumbled mess. This is the Baha'i faith. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Well, there we go. I just it's just this family nickname looks strange to me. Maybe NSA is incorrect. Maybe it's the CIA. I don't know. It's the I-O at the end that's strange. Maybe Popeye is incorrect. Don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, soothsayer could be a seer. They could declare something like, beware geeks bearing grifts, maybe. And a square's length squared is its area. That is the formula for the area of a square. Lead into pen. Pen is capitalized, which is important because it makes it look like a brand name, which it is in this case, EpiPen, um, the medical device. Play thing. At least I'm fairly sure that's a that's a brand name. I don't think it's become genericized yet. Uh, play thing is. Uh, I assume this is referring to a dramatic play because of the question mark pun indicator here. And loose as laces to, they're untied. So here's another case where loose could be a verb or an adjective. The laces could they could be loose as an adjective, or you could loose them. I suppose loosen or loose them. To untie them, but in this case, it's an adjective, so it's untied. Oh, auntie is the family nickname. Oh, this was the NSA or NSC, probably NSA. Why was that so difficult for me to see? I don't know. It's very strange. K 
counterpart of 84 across, 84 across is the right of Christ. This is sort of mutually referential clues. So tick and tack maybe, and tic-tac-toe? I don't know. Let's, let's look at this again. That poor lion has a mighty toothache. Boy, when it pains, it roars. There we go. Very good. So when the lion is in pain, it roars about its toothache. This is probably tic-tac. Um, and then, yeah, so very clever. Uh, obviously, referencing the phrase, when it rains, it pours. We've, we've front flipped it as a spoonerism to when it pains, it roars. Very good. Big name in chicken is not Popeye's. It's big name in chicken. I don't know. Choctaw word for people as seen in a U.S. state name. Is it Ohio? Maybe. Big Apple fashion initials. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Oh, maybe it's Oklahoma. Oklahoma. This could then be DKNY, Donna Karen, New York. Because this says as seen in a U.S. state name. It's part of a U.S. state name. That could be the answer. What about this big name? Oh, Purdue. They sort of a big distributor of packaged chicken of, you know, sold in supermarkets. Kapoor of Slumdog Millionaire. Ooh, I'm not sure. I don't think I know the name. I, 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 I might, but... I mean, Anil could be someone's name. I'm not sure. Least sweet, maybe. Uh, driest? Oh, in terms, yes, with respect to things like wines. You'd have a sweet wine or a drier wine. Okay. Sliced into thin strips as carrots. That's That kind of cut is called a julienne. So if you've sliced a carrot into thin strips, you've julienned it. And a J is a distinctive letter. Eagerly accepts, jumps at. You could jump at the opportunity, eagerly accept it. A Dundee denial, so Dundee, Scotland, would be nay for no. Um, half a giggle could be T as in tee hee, half of that happening. Uh, this could this could be a sort of gerund verb. I mean, something could be could be happening, be in the process of happening, or it could be an event, a happening. In it could be in the works or in process or in train, something like that. Sport, no, it's not, because sport blank vehicles, probably sport ute for sport utility. Um, so if something's happening, it's underway. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Oolong or Darjeeling, each of those is a T. And of course, because this is an or clue, we're only referring to one or the other. So it's actually a singular answer, even though we have two examples given. Ice cream entrepreneur Joseph must be Edie. Edie is a, Edie is a brand of ice cream. Ah, and here's another theme clue. Enjoy your stay on our horse farm. Hope it's not too noisy. You can expect... I don't know. Something a day. I'm not sure what. Oh, you can expect... Some, some squeals. You can expect... Three... Mayor squeals a day. There it is. It takes me so long to work through this in my brain, even when I basically understand what the answer is. It's still, I still have to, <laughs> the gears have to turn for several moments for some reason. But anyway, there we go. Three mayor squeals a day based on the phrase three square meals a day. We're uh, flipping the fronts and now we're describing the mares, um, some of those horses squealing per day, three times a day. Uh, this was a nil. There we go. Okay. And uh, let's see what that gives me. Q is a distinctive letter. Let's look at that. I want in Oaxaca. Um, quiero. Small tips, maybe. Maybe this is wrong. Roman theater. An odium. Stitched. Sewn. If something was stitched, it was sewn. Rain checks, wipers, as in they sort of check the rain, they intercede, they deal with it. I'm not sure if that's right. Latin 101 infinitive. ESSA, uh, GPS suggestions, abbreviations, roots. No, wait, roots with an E. 
soak up, sop up maybe, like sauce with bread. Annual New Year's celebration in Pasadena. Wow, specifically in Pasadena, I haven't a clue about that. That's interesting. Small tips maybe. Um, forest nymph. A dryad? Supposed to say a naiad, a water nymph. When tripled, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Sort of one of those things that became a huge, uh, I don't know, a huge kind of, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's not sort of pre-internet. I guess it's basically a social meme, thanks to Seinfeld, uh, when there was a Seinfeld episode where they kept saying that. Word with eagle or green. And kvass grain, rye. So kvass is a um, it's an Eastern European fermented drink with an inc- a, it's very slight alcohol content, but it's sort of sort of slightly in between the experience of drinking soda and drinking beer. It's very 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 lightly alcoholic. It's really nice. It's a nice sort of carbonated, naturally carbonated drink. Word with eagle or green. Why do I not see what this is? I don't know. Uh, nor do I know the New Year's celebration. What about this? Oh, right. It's another theme clue. Can you believe I sneaked into Buckingham Palace in a trunk and saw the king? I was a... something stowaway. Stones throw away. A throne stowaway. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I don't think there's a throne in Buckingham Palace, is there? Maybe there is. No, I guess there probably is. Um, that's really funny. Stones throw away, thrones stow away. That's, that's really good. It's, it's particularly nice because we've turned throw away, we've combined that into a single compound word, stow away. That's very good. That's a very clever one. All right, let's see. Big roll could be a wad of cash, maybe. Pirate's exclamation. R, right, it's an R, maybe. It's that kind of thing. Okay, there we go. Word with eagle or green. Green Green-eyed, eagle-eyed. There we go. That's it. So what is the New Year's celebration, particularly in Pasadena? I'm very curious about that. Small tips, maybe. Oh, this isn't jumps at. It jumps on. I was right about Kiero. Okay. And then small tips are ones, as in bills, $1 bills, for instance. You give a small tip. Ah, there we go. And then a rose parade, I suppose. And then it was, that was Essa. Okay, that was my guess, the Latin 101 infinitive. All right. Italian unit of time could be aura for hour. Um... How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. King Lear from Shakespeare. A uh, plaything, a program. A, a, you could be. You could have a program in a dramatic production that explains the plot and lists the actors and so on. Excuse me, a hem. You might say, clear your throat with a with a hem. Titular Austin heroine, of course, Emma, one of the great heroines of literature, and then Periwinkle by another name is Myrtle, I think, M-Y-R-T-L-E. Yes, this looks right, because what a drag could be bummer. One of five every seven. A weekday, you have five weekdays in a seven-day week. Didn't pick up what someone was putting down. You missed a trick. You missed a something, but let's look at the crosses here. Home to Masada National Park. Israel? Yes, to annoy is to irk somebody. Okay, that was correct. Um, Prin of the Scarlet Letter, Hester Prin, the character from the Scarlet Letter. I think, wasn't the Scarlet Letter referenced in some way in a New York Times puzzle recently as well? I think it was. Uh, to reach a dental milestone is to teeth, I suppose, as a, as a very, very young child. Why on a form would, could be a yes answer. And comedian uh, Senac, Wyatt Senac, um, or Wyatt Senac, and then story that goes over one's head 
is as an attic. Missed. Didn't pick up what someone was putting down. Missed a cue. Maybe a social cue that you that you didn't pick up on. What was exited during Brexit? <laughs> was the EU. Um, for better or worse. And occupational suffix is occupation. Oh, maybe I-E-R, as in someone who does something, is a something here. A, um, a hotelier, for instance, is someone who, you know, operates hotels. So, and then we have, yes, Terre Haute, Indiana. I'm not sure where this falls on sort of how accurately to French it's pronounced. I suspect probably intentionally not very. But anyway, let's look at the answers. No, I have something wrong. Oh, no. All right. Well, I'm sure many of you saw whatever I did wrong the instant I did it, and I didn't. So I'm going to run through this crossword, look over what we have, and I'll probably cut out the bit where I'm just painstakingly traipsing through this thing because it is not interesting. I mean, the problem is this could be wrong. Although, ironically, even though I didn't know the word, it was probably better checked than any other answer in the puzzle because I looked at all the clues several times. So maybe let's just do that. Anyway, um, I'll be back with you in a moment once I found my error. Okay, I'm back. It occurs to me that Tic Tac could be wrong. I did feel a bit uneasy about this when I put it in because there's just not sufficient context given really to be completely certain what these are. Now, I do think Tic Tac is a valid answer, but something else you could have in here is tit and tat, as in tit for tat, sort of people engaging in a kind of back and forth, I don't know, maybe light reprisal. So let's see if that works. It is, and that's the answer. Okay. I, that really bothers me, I have to say. I think when you have no means to cross that, and there is a completely, I think what one could genuinely consider a valid answer in their counterpart. I mean, tit for tat is a is definitely a better answer than tick and tack. I mean, there's no question about that. But I still think it's it's just not unambiguous enough. Anyway, that's a tough one. I I wonder how many other people have that made that same mistake. Um, I would guess at least a few. Anyway, that was the Sunday puzzle. Other than this, which I really don't like, the the rest of the puzzle was very good, and I thought the spoonerisms were great. So let's look at those again quickly. Hugh Hefner was quite the media mogul. They called him Mr. Bunny Mags from Mr. Moneybags. I know they've had them on all day, but let the kids eat their candy. After all, a ring pop is a wearable thing to taste, from a mind being a terrible thing to waste. Do you really trust these Bitcoiners? Beware geeks bearing grifts, um, just as one should beware Greeks bearing gifts. The poor lion has a mighty toothache. Boy, when it pains it roars from when it rains, it pours. Enjoy your stay on our horse farm. Hope it's not too noisy. You can expect three mare squeals a day from three square meals a day. And finally, I think the last one, and maybe one of my favorites because of the way that the sort of words are compounded. I think this is so clever. Can you believe I sneaked into Buckingham Palace in a trunk and saw the king? I was a throne's stowaway from stone's throw away. And it changes this kind of Metro, it changes the kind of poetic meter, or the, not poetic, but the kind of stress meter of the read as well. It just it it recontextualizes it very significantly in a way that I find uh, quite quite pleasing and impressive. So there we go. That was our Sunday puzzle. I really enjoyed that. I hope you did as well. It was very clever. I thought, um, barring that one one slightly ambiguous uh, cell. Uh, very good. I really enjoyed the spoonerisms. Well done, John Kugelman, on his. Um, debut appearance in the New York Times crossword. And that's that. And actually, I do, and I just almost forgot, I do have some clues from yesterday's puzzle to read. So, or some comments, I should say, from yesterday's puzzle to read. So let's do those quickly. Andrew Taylor points out Alec Waugh was Evelyn Waugh's older brother and a popular but inferior novelist. So I, right, when I saw Waugh, my first thought was Evelyn Waugh. And I didn't know Alec Waugh, I guess, unsurprisingly. Um, Andrew Taylor continues, his first and most famous book was The Loom of Youth, about life in an English public school, which was regarded as very scandalous because of some very mild references to homosexual relationships between schoolboys. All right, there we go. New information to me, Alec Waugh. Uh, Brandon Baker explains that lead-offs refers 
to the first one up to bat in baseball, referred to as the leadoff batter, leading off the inning or the lineup. Thank you for that. And Stephen Giblin points out that jean is in fact not just denim, but is a durable twilled cotton cloth used especially for sportswear and work clothes. So there we go. Uh, corrected my misapprehension on that one. Any Prophet points out that Cosmos are made with cranberry juice and vodka, so that is why they might be an alternative to a, um, a vodka cran. It's just that Cosmos have some other things as well. But uh, I did not realize that. I've never actually had a Cosmopolitan, so um, I was not aware of that. But thank you. It makes sense now. And finally, Chasmart Designs points out that the location in Hawaii is pronounced Hilo, not Hilo. So thank you for, for that correction as well. And that's everything from yesterday's puzzle. There we have it. Hope you enjoyed today's puzzle, today's video. I'll be back tomorrow with the much quicker, much simpler, but still themed Monday crossword. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Uh -huh.